Hello student, I think you like uh, the first lecture that is that was on uh, free body diagram. So far we have discussed a uh, different uh, free body, how to draw the uh, free body of different objects under the action of a number of forces. And uh, specially we have also learned the uh, condition of static equilibrium that is a very helpful for next lectures and the present lecture also so what is there summation of fx equals to 0 summation of fy equals to 0 and summation of ma equals to 0 means summation of moment uh, at any point is equals to 0 in case of static equilibrium now in the present lecture uh, which is the second lecture of this subject engineering mechanics I am going to discuss the moment, moment of a force, beam, transverse loading on the beam, beam means that is carrying the vertical load that in details we are going to discuss here. The transverse loading, the vertical load that is termed as the transverse load that you have uh, experience in uh, different constructions and the bending moment shear force all this so uh, let's uh, first uh, start with what is moment of a uh, force okay uh, so we are starting with the conception of moment of a force. So, what do you understand about the moment? Moment is responsible for angular motion or angular acceleration. It is similar to the force which is responsible for linear acceleration. As per Newton's law, you know P equals to mf for P is the applied force, M is the mass and F is the acceleration caused due to the force. Similarly, in case of angular motion, the angular acceleration is caused due to the moment or moment of a force. So, what is this quantity to understand? Let us consider the example of a door. Let us uh, consider uh, this is a door and you know uh, a door opening and closing of door means it is a rotation about an axis. Say it is the y axis and door opening and closing is about this axis. Now how it will be operated? You have to apply the force on the door. Now, let us consider different uh, position of the uh, point of application of the door. If, with the, uh, a stick is there in your hand and you, you, will, you are applying the force to the door with the help of this stick. Now, consider three different position A, B and C where you are applying the force. F. And due to the result of this force, the door will close or it will get accelerated or you will get, it will get the angular acceleration. What different positions are there? See here, position C is on the axis. Position B is in the middle and position A is apart from the axis. So, these are the three positions. Again, let us consider this stick or along the stick the force is applied or the line of action of force is along the stick. Now, let us consider the stick is at an angle of theta with the surface of this door. 
here this dashed line is on the surface of the uh, door and perpendicular to the axis. Now what angle is making with the uh, stick and the dashed line that is the theta angle. Now from your experience you know that if it is the position C whatever may be the magnitude of the force the door will not close at all. Another position is B. Yes, now you can close the uh, door by the same force. But you know, in that case, whatever acceleration, acceleration means here, what you can visualize, what time it takes to close the doors. Less time, high acceleration, more time means low acceleration. So, the third position is at the end of the door, very apart from the axis. So, from your experience you know that the uh, least force is required if the position of the uh, stick is here, means at A, at extreme end of the door, if you are applying the force. Means, For the angular acceleration, force is required or angular acceleration definitely depends on the force. But in addition to that, other parameter is also important. That is the angular, that is the distance. So, we can write down angular acceleration alpha is proportional to r, r is the distance. As r is increases, it is more easy, means it, the closing of the door is fast, means acceleration is high. Again, for r equals to 0, here no acceleration at all. So, the angular acceleration is proportional to r. And already I have told you that acceleration is also proportional to F. So finally, the angular acceleration is proportional to R into F. Again, what is the sine theta? From your experience, you know, if the stick is parallel to the dashed line, is parallel to the door, then the force will work, will uh, give rise no acceleration. This accelerating effect will be high if this angle is 90 degree. Now, as you know from this discussion that uh, the angular acceleration is proportional to R as well as F. <coughs> so, R into F. Now, into means what? It is cross product or dot product as uh, R is the position vector and F is the force both is the vector quantity. Now this two vector quantity you can multiply by dot product or cross product. Now which product we should follow here? Dot or cross. See here if the angle is 90 degree then effect is maximum means we are, you are getting the maximum acceleration. Means we have to consider R into F into sin theta, sin 91. That is the maximum quantity. And you know that. So, Rf sin theta gives us the magnitude if it is the cross product between R and F. So, finally, angular acceleration is a cross product proportional to the cross product of R and F. This cross product of R and F is called the moment of force. Moment of force. Now, this moment of force is proportional to alpha. And uh, 
there is a proportionality constant. This is called the m equals to i alpha means this proportionality constant is the i. Here i is the mass moment of inertia. In the subsequent topic, we will discuss in details about this mass moment of inertia. Okay. So, this is about the conception of moment of force. So, finally, it is moment of force equals to R cross F or the magnitude is Rf sin theta. And what is the direction? Direction is perpendicular to the plane of R and F. What is the direction of R? R is the from the axis to this point of application, this is the R and this is the F. So, finally, RF is in horizontal plane. So, the direction of M is perpendicular to this plane as per the rule of uh, cross product. So, this is along the direction of rotation axis. This axis is perpendicular to the plane, horizontal plane. So, moment direction is perpendicular to this. Means along the y axis. So, finally, the moment of force magnitude is Rf sin theta and direction is along the rotational axis y. Now it is the beam. So what is beam? In your house structure, in any construction, you know a horizontal beam is there where transverse load is applied. Transverse load means the load which is perpendicular to the axis of the beam. This is the load. The beam supports the load of the roof. So, this load is acting vertically downward and whereas the beam is horizontal. Always the horizontal position structure is the beam. Which is carrying the vertical load. So, the direction of this load is perpendicular to the axis of the beam. That is why it is called the transverse load, means the perpendicular load. And you see, under the action of this load, the uh, beam subjected to, to, to different types of strain. This end is the compressive strain, it tends to compress, whereas the opposite end is subjected to tension. And the corresponding strain, strain means you know it is the elongation or compression per unit length. So it is subject to tensile strength. Compressive means it is reducing. And tensile means is increasing. Now, as I have told you that a transverse load means the load that is applying perpendicular to the beam axis. Now, different types of loading is there or a beam is subjected to different types of loading that are the transverse load, concentrated load, the trans transverse load or point load. Sorry, okay, this slide need to change. I am going to modify this slide. So, transverse load means the load 
that is applying perpendicular to the axis of the beam. Now, depending on the characteristics of load, the trans different types of transverse loads are there, like concentrated load, uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load, and coupled load. Now, let's go to the details about all these loads. First one is concentrated load. First one is concentrated load. Here in mechanics, always load means the force. Now, what types of force is applying here? Let's consider the beam is supported by this two support at two end. And whatever load means force applied at a particular point. So this is called the concentrated. As if the entire force is applying at a particular point only, so this is called the concentrated load or point load. Now, it is the uniformly distributed load. This load, you see, it is uniformly distributed means the entire load is not working at a particular point rather uniformly distributed means a per unit load, load length the load is applied. Let's consider the omega is the per unit load, load per unit length load. Then uh, we can get the total load or the equivalent concentrated load like it is the omega per unit length. So, total amount of this load is omega into L. And as it is uniform, so this load is also called the rectangular load and the center of this load is at the middle. And magnitude is omega L and point of application is middle. So, this is the equivalent concentrated load. This is the distributed load and corresponding equivalent load is this omega L. Generally, uh, these are the symbols that is used to represent the inwardly distributed load. These or this, anyhow. In most of the cases, the beam subjected to uniformly distributed load, especially in case of any construction, in all parts, at any distance from the end, it is subjected to load, means it is uniformly distributed load. So, now it is uniformly varying load and triangular load. So, uniformly varying load means, sorry, I think uh, there is an error. So, let us change this. <coughs> okay, it is the uniformly varying load and the trapezoidal load. So, we are starting with uniformly varying load. So, here again the load is not concentrated at a particular point, but it is distributed, but this distribution is not uniform. Uh, let us consider from this end, it is the magnitude of the load is uh, 0 per unit length, whereas at the right extreme end it is the omega per unit length. And this change 0 to omega this uniformly varying. So, finally, this is also called the triangular load. The shape of the load is triangular. Now, here also, we can uh, get the equivalent of this load. So, what, how we are making this equivalence of the load? As it is the triangular, the area under this load is half into the length 
L into this height omega. Whereas in case of rectangular, it is the length into breadth with length was L and omega was the height. But here it is the triangle, so half into omega into L. So this is the magnitude. Now, what is the point of application of this uh, total load? The total application of this total load is, you know, the position of centroid of a triangle is one third of the this base. Now, this is the base of the triangle from this one third distance means L by 3 is the distance. At L by 3 distance, total load half omega L is applied. So, this is the corresponding equivalent triangular point load. Corresponding to triangular load, it is the equivalent load diagonal. Now, it is the uniformly varying load that we already have discussed. Now, it is the trapezoidal load. Trapezoidal load means here also it is changing similar to the uh, triangular load but at the left end this magnitude is not 0 rather other value omega 1. So, this is changing from omega 1 uh, per unit length to omega 2 per unit length. This is the variation. Now, to get the corresponding equivalent load, we will divide this trapezoidal area into two parts. First part is the rectangular part and then it is the triangular part. And total, this trapezoid is the summation of the rectangular part and the triangular part. For the rectangular part, as here the magnitude is omega 1, so this height is omega 1 per unit length and this is equals to that omega 2, this total height is omega 2, omega 2 minus omega 1. And for both these cases, the length is A. Then we are getting the corresponding equivalent load light, uh, uh, let us consider on the beam, this rectangular and triangular load is working separately. So, for the rectangular load, we know that the entire magnitude concentrated load is working through the middle point. So, it is acting through middle point and the magnitude is for this rectangle, this is the omega and this length is L. So, omega 1, sorry, omega 1 into L. So, omega 1 into L and working at middle point as already we have discussed in case of rectangular load or uniformly distributed load. Whereas, in case of triangular load, the magnitude is half into this base omega 2 minus omega 1 into length. This is the magnitude and what is the point of application from the base? It is one third is at L by 3. L is the total distance so L by 3. So, this is equal to the equivalent trapezoidal load. load. So, for the rectangular load, we know. Now, it is the couple load and combination load. So, first we are discussing the couple load. Couple load means if equal and opposite force is applied to a beam. This both the force is equal and opposite means point of application of both the load is not same. Then you know these two force or couple forms a moment, moment of the couple. This moment tends to uh, rotate the beam. This force, this type of force together forms a couple load. So, in case of couple load always you need not uh, apply both P and P. See, you are applying a single P 
and other P is developed due to the resistance of the structure. Then also a couple will form and as a result a moment will work on this. So this type of loading is called couple load or moment of couple load. Now in actual application maybe the beam is subjected to all these types of load. Point load, uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load, couple load, all of this or few of these loads. So this is called the load system on the beam. Now already we have discussed about the uh, beam. Now what different types of beam is there? The beam is classified based on the support and loading system and what types of load is applied there. Based on this, three major different uh, and important type of uh, uh, types of uh, beam is there, support is there, that is cantilever beam, simply supported beam and over beam. And first we are discussing about the cantilever beam. So what is cantilever beam? If the beam is inserted in a wall, this is the fixed end as it is inserted, so this end is fixed end. And on the other end or in between any of the position, the load is applied. So this type of beam is called and this end is free. This type of loading of the beam is called cantilever beam. Now, under the action of say at the end, you are applying a force P. Now, what's the deflection? You see, this type of deflection you are getting for this beam. Now, it is the simply supported beam. So, what is simply supported beam? If the beam is supported like these two types of at two ends, this is called it simply supported beam. And this one is the overhanging beam. Means at the end there is a support, at this end support, and some part is like a cantilever. So this part B to C is similar to cantilever, and A to B is like simply supported. So combination of these two is called the overhanging beam. Now see the corresponding deflection. If for a simply supported beam at the middle a load or force P is applied, it will bend like this. Whereas in case of overhanging beam, if two loads P1 and P2 is applied there, we are getting this type of deflection. and they, these are the references that uh, we are using to uh, prepare this uh, presentation. Okay, so this is all about uh, different types of beam under the various uh, load and supports. And uh, I think you have understood and uh, if you have the doubt, so please uh, uh, make uh, free to contact and uh, press the comments in the comments box. You can ask me the questions or you can uh, go through any queries through my mail ID also. And uh, in the next uh, lecture uh, please is uh, coming soon. So, I will uh, request you to follow the next lecture also. The next lecture we will conduct on shear force and bending moment of different loading. Thank you. Thank you for uh, listening the lecture. Thank you.